I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear The thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Is it premature to be talking about two serial killers in the Gilgo Beach case? Rex Eurman has a nice little loophole potentially as conjecture that there may be two serial killers on his turf gains traction. That loophole is that if there's doubt surrounding what he didn't do, that somebody else did something instead of what he did, and I think there is, and also doubt surrounding the extent and range of the killer's victims, and there is, well then he can cover himself theoretically in reasonable doubt. We'll deal with some of the analysis and statements from experts suggesting there may be two serial killers, but I think an easy way for the defense to take advantage of this is to say a serial killer, not human, simply changed his modus operandi. We saw something like that in the Yorkshire Ripper case, as far as I can remember, where Peter Sutcliffe started targeting women who weren't prostitutes. One could argue that over a significant period of time, either one killer changed his MO or that there were copycat killings, both of which create doubt that that a respected Manhattan architect could have committed any of these crimes. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. What do the experts say about two serial killers? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So John Kelly, a veteran criminal profiler, told the U.S. Sun that he believes that there's more than one culprit responsible for the spree of killings. Now, I don't disagree with that. But to be clear, I think Kelly's theory isn't that there's more than one culprit, but more than one serial killer. I don't want to be putting words in his mouth, so let's look at what he says. He says there's a distinctive difference in modus operandi between the Gilgo 4 and those found in Manaville, which to him makes it incredibly unlikely to have been the work of the same person. Kelly says with the Gilgo 4, the killer was very fastidious in the way they attempted to hide the bodies by wrapping them in this camouflage burlap And in a previous analysis, I've said why I don't really like that word. I don't think it's the best word to use for Hureman. Anyway, that is what what Kelly says about this notion that there could be more than one culprit. But what does he say about two serial killers? And that brings us to the next section, one pattern, two patterns or more. So he says, just right down the road, you've got these other bodies of other women that were found, including a child and a young Asian man, and they were not hidden very well. They weren't wrapped up in burlap or anything that we know of, and of course, none of the Gilgo four were. Yes, but there's also Shannon Gilbert, and I think she's a good example of this idea of somehow wanting a victim to have died a certain way, and then suddenly she's elevated elevated in the true crime sense from a meaningless but dreadful accident to part of a serial killer's labyrinth and suddenly you've got this big news story to talk about. A key fact in this case is time, basically 27 years since Karen Vergata disappeared in 1996. But the bottom line is Kelly's question where he says, so that begs the question, do we have two serial killers using the same dumping grounds? That's very rare, but I believe at least two killers were hunting in the same area. So he seems to be saying, I believe that there were at least two, I don't know if he means serial killers, hunting in the same area. So I've got to say there's only one thing in that statement I really agree with, and that's that serial killers these days are rare. He says very rare. And I think one's got to qualify that and say, how rare is rare? To be honest, I don't know how you can make the case that you have a particular modus operandi with one set of remains and then say a child and an Asian man are now part of some other modus operandi. 
a child and an Asian man. Anyway, Kelly said that it takes a very different kind of killer to do what was done to the other victims. He said, the way they disposed of the remains was almost taunting law enforcement, whereas the Gilgo 4 killer took time to conceal his victims. Well, the Gilgo 4 killer also taunted some of his victims. And Karen Vergata, her remains were found in different areas. Uh, she seems to be associated with a Uriman investigation, at least by inference. Otherwise, why would the cops do such a big song and dance about it with their press conference? And that brings us to the third area, the scout mindset, but with a caveat. The definition of a serial killer is someone who kills three or more people with a cooling off period between each one. Rex Uriman's charges barely meet that definition. At this point, he's charged with three murders and he seems to be associated with a fourth. Kelly refers to a serial killer being rare, but, but what does this mean? Well, I've just done a poll and around um, 25% actually got the poll right, right? 25%, a quarter of my community know just how rare serial killers are these days. Congratulations to those who got it right. You guys are true blue, true crime rocket scientists. So how rare are serial killers? Well, there are fewer serial killers in America today than there were in the 60s and every decade since. That's not, that's, that's not a case of adjusting for population growth or per capita. That's total. So somewhere around the, th the, the 70s, there were around 300 serial killers in America. And around now, they're something like 50 or less than 50. Another way of saying all of this is that there are fewer serial killers now than in the past 50 years. So where do you think this impression comes from that there are serial killers all over the place, that there, there's like an army of serial killers running around Gilgo Beach, that whenever a crime is committed, oh, maybe that's a serial killer. Maybe Brian Koberg is a serial killer. So I think this raises two questions. First of all, what's behind this drop in serial killers? Really interesting because I'm, I'm really interested in how crime affects society and how society also to an extent creates crime. Also, if there are fewer serial killers now than half a century ago, why does true crime seem to believe whenever there's a murder, maybe it's another serial killer? Where, where does that come from? So there are a couple of answers to these questions in terms of the drop in serial killers. That is largely due to societal changes. Things like there were a lot of hitchhikers in the 70s. That's changed. I hitchhiked as a, as a young guy. I don't do that anymore and nobody else seems to do it either. Serial killers of sex workers is also almost as old as the oldest profession as well. What's changed is sex workers have gotten savvier. And then there's technology. DNA and cell phone tracking has made it a lot easier to track and trace the behaviors of serial offenders. Then also distrust has risen. Things have changed in the last few decades. Fear around mass killings have increased. Uh, the public's general anxiety and distrust has gone up as well. I read on a website where someone said people are a lot more aware and cautious than they used to be. We're less likely to accept the help of a stranger. Someone's going to, you know, um, suggest fixing your flat tire. you less trusting of that. I was actually myself a little distrusting when someone who said they were a fan of my channel wanted to meet in New York. And I wondered, you know, is there a ulterior motive going on? A UK website also adds to these reasons um, post-war PTSD, that's Second World War, which suggests that there can be a military connection to murders. Also, the death penalty was banned in the UK in 1965, and then we saw a spike in serial killings in the 70s. Another thing is interstate highway systems initially enabled serial killings, often involving vehicles. As I said, serial killings and serial killers peaked in the 70s. 
And now I want to talk about the influence of true crime. You know, why does true crime seem to believe whenever there's a murder lately, maybe it's another serial killer? I mean, the statistics don't corroborate this, so why do people believe this? And I've just watched a fellow YouTuber with quite a large following, interviewed on Core TV, I think it's about the murder of a jogger, on the one hand cautioning people not to speculate and then speculating that the perpetrator could be a serial killer, just like that. This same YouTuber, if I remember correctly, suggested Brian Koberger could be a serial killer. He has an insight. He's not. According to an article in Northeastern Global News, quote, looking at the most streamed movies or television shows on any given streaming service, it would be easy to assume that serial killers lurk behind every corner. The stories of Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, and the Boston Strangler still loom large, even if the likelihood that you'll encounter another Zodiac killer has never been lower. The other thing is the algorithm on YouTube works where because most people are aware of these movies and the streaming stuff uh, and it's becoming popular or well, the popular narrative now becomes to suggest that someone's a serial killer. It's not really about whether it's true, whether it's good analysis and when it, as it, if it turns out ultimately that the person isn't, nobody really cares. They're interested in the popular sensational aspect of it. Let me repeat that. The likelihood that you might encounter a serial killer is the lowest it's ever been in our lifetimes. Now, the crazy part in me saying that is I almost encountered Rex Heuerman. I'm not saying he's necessarily a serial killer. He's a suspected serial killer. But I almost encountered him when I was in, in New York, when I was in Manhattan two months ago. And if I'd left when I was supposed to leave, I was supposed to leave the 7th of July, I, 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 and, you know, I, I missed his arrest. I would have missed his arrest essentially by about a week. Um, anyway, so it's it's a very um, low probability that that you'll encounter a serial killer. And I think one's got to balance that with the other side of it, which is there are now a lot more of a different kind of killing where it all happens in one go, Right. Instead of all of that emotion, all of that opprobrium coming out and, and frustration and fantasy and whatever it all is coming out of a period of time, now it all comes out in a single blaze of glory from the perpetrator's perspective. I think you can thank true crime opportunists, the same ones who see pedophile abductors behind every bush, uh, as if that's the dominant reason children go missing, and I did a poll on that as well. Most people got got that poll very, very badly wrong uh, because it's highly exceptional. But you can blame the true crime opportunists for succeeding in completely distorting the statistical facts of these crimes. And there is something strange about um, true crime supposedly being about the truth and about crimes and about criminality. And the people that are watching this are ma manipulated and misled. And does that matter? Does it matter that you don't have the right information? Or is the important thing that it's popular and someone makes money out of um, giving you the wrong impression, but the impression that you already have, preying on the impression that you already have? In any event, since the 1970s and 80s, a high activity period for serial killers, the numbers have dropped significantly. That's according to Northeastern Global News. As I said earlier, from 300 in the 70s to fewer than 50 known active killers since 2010. My natural instinct when I heard that there could be two serial killers in Gilgo Beach was to scoff because one serial killer is rare, two is extremely rare. Nevertheless, we do need to keep our scout mindset hats on. We need to be curious, find out which crimes can be matched to human. And that should be our focus at this point. Not try and hunt for another serial killer or, you know, we basically need to figure out the crimes on Gilgo Beach, which are human's handiwork and sort of focus on that aspect. But speculating that there might be another serial killer out there only strengthens his case. Does that make sense? Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.